This is a young professional quarterback, one of the great college All-Americans of our time. This is Steve Spurrier, the San Francisco 49er and former University of Florida Heisman Trophy winner in action. The professional football world took a long look when Steve guided San Francisco to an upset victory over the feared Baltimore Colts. Here the former Tennessee schoolboy calmly throws under terrific pressure. Another on-target Spurrier pass. One of the coolest performers in football and at his very best under tense situation. Spurrier again showed his unusual poise against Minnesota in severe weather. Steve Spurrier was not exactly born a great quarterback. No one is. Before his professional career, he was a sensational college passer, great punter, fine place kicker, and a courageous runner when the situation made a sudden under fire demand. A leader of young men, an American youth dedicated to body conditioning, competitive sports, intense practice and smooth teamwork. Steve's brand of football is one of many honors. Foremost, there was the Heisman Trophy, symbolic of being chosen the number one college football player in the nation. Also, he was awarded the United Press International College Player of the Year Trophy. In addition, he was selected by the experts in 1966 to everybody's All-America team. Being a fine pro quarterback, following a great All-American college career, calls for a lot of natural ability on the field. But it also means a lot of hard work on the fundamentals of the game. Let's go back to college with Steve. The University of Florida, where Super Steve, as the newspaper boys finally called him, brought crowds to their feet three seasons, while he pulled game after game out of the fire with dead-eye passing and shrewd quarterback. At the University of Florida, drills are used to improve arm and hand quickness. One of the best drills is purposely designed to restrict the passer to the use of only the arm. He is required to throw to a stationary target from these two positions, from 35 to 52 times during a practice session. Another valuable drill. This one is based on the fact that passes are required to elude rushing linemen regain a throwing position, then deliver the ball to a receiver. Getting down to the fine points of quarterbacking, we asked Steve about his pattern. As far as my pattern is concerned, I can divide it into two categories. First, the drop back. This is where the quarterback drops back and gets set up. Here's where the fundamentals drilled into you during every practice session begin to pay off. You must remember to keep your feet in position under the body then step in the direction you plan to throw, always keeping the ball in a set position close to the chest. At the proper time, you give the ball a natural delivery and follow through. Actually, there are a number of plays off the drop back. It's the pattern I most frequently use. You'll note that as you fade back, you also look for your number one pass receiver. Three out of four times, you'll usually pass to him, unless the situation dictates something else. The second category is the rollout, and again, there are several plays that can be executed. The option play, for example, falls into a rollout pattern. The key to success here is to execute quick footwork. 
Get out as fast as you can, keep your feet under control, and take short, choppy steps. Make the end move or go after you. Be right on top of him before you pitch the ball. If the end decides to take the halfback, you run. Usually the long pass play is set up with a receiver designated. He's your number one man. Other times you might find out in the huddle that a man is getting in the open because of the way the defender is playing him. But this kind of opportunity may only knock once, so you have to make the most of it. University of Florida Athletic Director Ray Graves, who coached Spurry on his way to fame, was asked, what are the assets you look for in a quarterback? Leadership is a definite asset. And by that I mean the quarterback must instill a feeling of confidence. And this confidence must be expressed not just by the quarterback himself, but by the other ten men on the field and the coaches on the sideline, and even the fans and students in the stands. They call that the twelfth man a lot of times, and a lot of times that's the difference. But add everything up, and you've got a winning tradition, and you've got a, a champion. On the field, it's uh, demonstrated by knowledge and control of offensive formations and personnel. This is an age of uh, complicated defenses and offenses, and with this, uh, there's a lot more pressure on all the players in making decisions. But for the quarterback, it means automatic play changes on the line of scrimmage. And Steve Spurrier is a master at this, and he's done it many times. You have five or six seconds to decide on change of play. It must be the best play. It must be the right play against the defense that they presented against you. It's just not the man's physical ability that counts. He has to be able to produce under pressure, oftentimes against heavy odds. Of course, it takes a lot of training, squad meetings, a lot of extra effort. But being able to produce under pressure, making split-second decisions, decisions that are right, these are the qualities you look for in high school recruiting. Now, let's not forget that the best quarterback in the business is worthless if he doesn't have a line to protect him and if he doesn't have some fine receivers. The stance of a split receiver should be such that he has full vision of the ball at all times before it is snapped. And this position must still allow a quick fluid takeoff. This is one of the most successful routes used by wideout receivers. Basically, in call, it's the sideline cut. And it's marked by its smooth takeoff and quick, sharp move. We use this drill to improve a receiver's ability to locate the ball in flight and follow it with his eyes all the way into his hands. To be a great receiver, he must master this. We call it the search drill. Quick change of direction is a valuable asset to receivers, and this drill does just that. The idea is to improve the ability to catch a ball thrown straight over the shoulder, the most difficult catch of all. A great amount of balance is required in order to follow the ball all the way into the hands. Regardless of the position he plays, a good athlete must possess coordination, dedication, and must be properly motivated. Above all, a prerequisite is proper conditioning. He must get in shape, and he must stay in shape. It's a grind, too, in season and out of season as well. And diet has as much to do with sound conditioning as any other one single factor. Now, we set up a training table for our athletes so we can control their diets. And we expect them to use self-discipline when they're away from the training table also. Now, an important part of an athlete's diet is orange juice, and for a good reason. It's been proven that the use of orange juice can reduce bruising to a minimum. And we found in almost every instance the consumption of about a quarter of orange juice per day 
for shortened recovery time from a bad bruise or muscular soreness. It pays off in better performance. Not as many practice hours are missed, which might well be the difference between winning and losing. I got on this Florida orange juice kick back at the university. What they say about it being a necessary part of an everyday diet is true. But for my money, it's more than just a diet. It's a most refreshing drink. My wife, Jerry, knows what's always at the top of her shopping list. I've got her trained right. Don't even have to remind her anymore. I keep up a pretty rapid pace, even at home, but I always take time out for a Florida orange juice break, even if my public image suffers momentarily. When I started getting really serious about football, I made up my mind to keep in condition. One thing you can't do is eat between meals, except for raw fruit and fruit juices. You must lay off snacks and candy. Get three square meals a day, meat, milk, bread, vegetables, cereals, raw fruit, fruit juices. If you want to be able to take those hard knocks, make sure you drink enough Florida orange juice. It'll really pay off. Even during the off season, I play a lot of sports. There's no better way to keep the body in good condition than by exercise. Coaches agree that players should compete in all sports because it builds confidence, and self-confidence building must start early. At an early age, play as many sports as possible. Later on, you'll know what you're best at playing, and then you can go on with a serious pursuit in that direction. When you've made up your mind, work hard at the fundamentals, learn the game well. Practice hard. The more you practice, the better you become. It's the real key to success. Well, there it is. From a sharp young National Football League quarterback and one of the greatest college All-Americans of our time. A guy who uses his brain as well as his brawn. As Steve says, above all, get in good shape and stay there through a proper diet. It's a design for winning and it'll help you be a success at any position you play in this great game of football. <laughs>